Okay, so the printing of Theros brought with it a new infinite combo in Heliod, Sun Crown, plus Walking Ballista here. Um, this is one of the many different ways you could try and assemble this combo. So what this deck is trying to do is it's leveraging the Witch's Oven, Cauldron Familiar kind of food package, along with Goose and Trail of Crumbs here, to generate some card advantage and have some ways to block against aggressive decks. And then Trail of Crumbs, notably the card advantage it generates, finds permanence. So Trail of Crumbs can find both Heliod and Walking Ballista here for us. So let's go ahead and dive on into some games with us and see how it goes. Interested to see if we can be interactive enough or fast enough to race some of the more linear or aggressive decks in the format. I know we have tried a non-combo oven deck in this format and it felt reasonable against the mid-range matchups, but just like too slow against combo decks. And the dynamic of having a two-card infinite combo that can pop off on turn five could potentially change that, I think. So I think adding this combo to this style of deck seems like a good approach to trying to solve a problem that we previously had, <clears throat> which was not being able to close quickly. Been two great years of combo with nerds and missing land drops. Welcome back, Philadelphia. Easy mulligan here, no second land. Keep, I guess. I guess. The two year does come with the horse. <clears throat> All right, scissors, eh? Well, I probably can't beat this in Soul Artifact, huh? So we'll take that one. I'm gonna have Citadel to go with it. I need to find some interaction here, ASAP. Win or lose, this deck is Dave Clark. I'm glad you appreciate the name. Morning Hype. I think I just play Blooming Marsh here and pass and just plan to like eat the food, trigger the trail. I feel like that deck doesn't have room for that, Marty. I also feel like after we played... I feel like after playing Uro in Historic, shoving Uro into that deck sounds way better than shoving. Sounds way better than shoving in Ballista Combo. Speaking of... Heliod's kind of cute with the food package, huh? Because you're, like, randomly gaining life sometimes with it, too. Oh, he triggers... I don't know why I didn't think about it. He triggers with Cat Oven, right? That's really funny. So, like, this card's, like, actually relevant even when we're not comboing. It's kind of great. How many Grixis decks have we played in Pioneer? Uh, not zero. It's a pretty good pickup. Get some Poly K in my life. Hey, Trax, thanks for the host. Hope you had a good stream this morning. Yeah, yeah, when you when you start baking cats, you can just make geese large. Super true. The protection from multicolored on this card is just like so absurdly relevant in so many spots.
Hmm. Hey, Slayer. Thanks for the 19 months. Welcome back. I appreciate it. So they have Royal Scion, Shrapnel Blast, and then three cards I don't know currently. It's a lot of cards I don't know. <clears throat> I'm only at 10. Heliod is stapling additional heads onto Pelucrodos. He is. Hey, Admin. Thanks for the 35 months. Welcome back. I appreciate it. This is two, three, four. Am I just dead? I'm just dead, right? Save Shrapnel Blast. Oh, I should have lifelinked this, right? That was the mistake I made. Yeah, I should have I should have not shocked and I should have lifelinked. That, that's definitely what I should have done. I wasn't thinking about that card giving him lifelink. That's a thousand percent what should have happened. Uh, the prevent text is it prevents damage dealt to him. So I would have I would have gained seven. And then I would have gotten to put a counter back on him too. Yeah. Yeah, if I if I'd have lifelinked this instead of shocking that land in, I'd have been plus nine there, right? And then they probably just can't race. Nebraska just too slow. Well, do Juka. Goose is a little slow. <coughs> yeah, like she kills them really slowly though. And like they play stubborn denial and stuff, and like metallic rebuke post board in the interactive matchups. Hey, what's going on, Shaman? Yeah, it's release weekend, and there's no <coughs> there's no major tournaments going on, so if you could lead, fire up and see how it goes. We have good viewer counts, so I might run long. I have a short, short uh, list of decks in the title, because it's hard to know what the viewer count's going to look like on, on Sundays when I'm not normally here. Hey, Cody, thanks for the sub-gift. I'm glad it is great. He's dead, Jim. You've killed my bird. I think I'm going to go tapped land. Fatal push this. Yeah, the three color decks in Pioneer are very similar to the three color decks in Standard and Historic. They they bleed for their mana. Basically got to play 12 shocks so you're not going to cast your spells consistently. Converted my modern Grixis Hollow Flare deck into Pioneer Green Black Flare and put a Godless Shrine in. 
for Kuranos out of the sideboard. Nice. To set a low bar, Soul Flayer is better in this format than it is in than it is in modern. Oh, did I forget to update Stream Decker? Yeah, I totally did. Thanks. play the goose to start it blocks this and gives me cheaper access to activating the trail yeah I, I agree that i don't know that play draw matters a ton in every matchup but especially the matchups that involve land war elves play draw is like really huge Pretty much converting all my modern decks for Pioneer. Love modern with Faithless Looting. Don't love it anymore. Yeah, it's... It's kind of wild. But I, I kind of agree with you. It, it feels weird to say it at the time. It feels weird to say it like right now. But I think Pioneer what or Pioneer Modern was better before the looting ban. And like, it's just like with Splinter Twin. Like, I think the format was better when Splinter Twin was legal. But I don't know that it's like a super clear parallel. Like, was it better because of Twin or was it better because of Faithless Looting? Or was it just like other things that happened in in that time frame that caused issues? I feel like, I feel like that's not super clear. Like, is were those cards being legal making the format better? Or was it just what were other things printed in similar timelines to those? Yeah, I think I think there's a good chance it's all the new stuff. I don't know. My ego wants to think it's the new stuff because, like, as someone who advocated for Faithless Looting being banned for a long time, like, if that was quietly making the format better, I made a huge mistake, right? Morning, dude. Maybe I was wrong to board on a trail. I boarded out geese too. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe murderous riders not good enough here just because it's so expensive. Is that crazy? What if I get greedy and kind of land on the draw? Probably never attack you with shambling vent. Yeah, I think I think it was more like the looting ban kind of coincided with Horizons. I think I think Horizons is bad. Hands a little bit slow with the fabled passage, but the cards are good, so let's do it. Yeah, I mean, like, and that's key to every format, right, Blake? Like, do you have a deck you enjoy playing? If yes, you enjoy the format. It's like a pretty, pretty clean flowchart, right? I wonder if I'm supposed to lead on Cat. So I could jump block in a spot like this. Of 
Could also be right here to like Fabled Passage up a tap play and play a cat. I think Horizons was designed to differentiate Modern from Pioneer, which they knew was coming. No, I think Modern, I think, I think like the lack of fetch lands and other key cards already differentiated it. I think, I think the idea of Modern Horizons is a really good idea. <clears throat> I think at the core, it's a fine, I think the execution left a lot to be desired. But I think the actual idea of what it was trying to do is more was more than noble, more than reasonable. It was something that was worth trying. That's true too. Modern Horizons pushed. I thought Burn was one of the better decks. I, I've always been adamant that like I like Burn being one of the better decks in a format like Modern. And the Horizon Lands really changed that dynamic, I feel. I feel like they took that away from me. Well, unfortunately, jump blocking this repeatedly is not an option. If they have a... If they have a scissors, we're probably just dead. Gotta go, gotta go fast. Beep, beep. I'm sacrificing this before I take the damage. So that's why if they shrapnel blast me, I can bring back the cat in response. Although, to be honest, if they have a shrapnel blast, we're probably just dead. It doesn't matter. They have blast. We're just at next turn anyway, so it doesn't it doesn't really matter. And comparing the opponent's deck to Grixis Shadow misses the base. Um, I think I think the kind of combo style kills. I think Shrapnel Blast has parallels to Teamer Battle Rage, so it's okay from that perspective. But the average card quality in this blue red deck is incredibly low. Whereas, like, the average card quality in Grixis Shadow tends to be pretty reasonable. Yeah, chat, but if they Shrapnel Blast me on their turn, this is unblockable, too. So, like, yeah, I get to, uh, I get to eat this food here and not be dead this turn, but I'm dead next turn when this gets unblockable and hits me again. Hmm, I guess we're technically not dead yet. I'm not dead yet. If they would have waited till their turn to do this, we'd be dead. So maybe they just have another burn spell. Hey, Scissor. Thank you for the very generous tier three resub. I appreciate the 14 months. Welcome back. So dead to wild slash, dead to shrapnel blast, dead to stiff, stiff breeze. Am I dead? I assume we're dead with how aggressive they were last turn. I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever beaten that deck on stream. If I definitely not like in the last half a dozen times we've played against it. Just every time they have all the things. Opponents throwing food at you is inappropriate. And that is, that is basically what they did, didn't they? Sitting over there flinging crap in our direction. That was that was a good that match was a good example of what I kind of talked about last time where we just got run down because we couldn't be interactive enough. Like this archetype's primary game plan against decks that are being aggressive is like trying to block with cat oven, and that just wasn't effective there against what our opponent was doing. Yeah, I mean, the, the install deck is, 
it has a wide range, right? Like, the average card quality in it is so low that, like, when the deck's not coming together, it's unplayable garbage. But, like, its nut draws are very, very good. We had Esper Control and Standard. It definitely can. The Exile base list that we played with the Agonizing Remorses main. Perfect. I forgot to... Uh, <coughs> I was adding a deck to my notes and forgot to... Uh, cat Oven the cat. Excited to lose with them at one. I'm going to shock this in so I can make a food. By the way, for people that don't follow me on Twitter and didn't see what I retweeted last night, apparently Wizards of the Coast has created a partnership with an actual software company to help them work on Arena. So that's kind of exciting. Maybe, maybe 2020 will be the year of quality magic software. I can dream, right? Is that too optimistic? Uh, go, I, I don't remember what the company name is. Is it some smaller company? But they're an actual software company from the looks of it. Which, like, set a low bar means they're more qualified than whatever Wizards is doing. Yeah, hopefully it's more than just the OS export. Hopefully they're, like, actually going to help them hammer out features. If you look at their list of job postings, it looked like they were hiring a couple of people specifically to work on Arena for them, so... Oh, this. Yikes. Well, so I assume we're dead next turn. So this exiles their deck face down, and they should have a Jace or something in their hand. Or like double Thassa's Oracle. Oh, I'm dumb. This could have killed Jace, right? Alright, if they had another one, we were dead. But yeah, that could that could kill Jace. Uh, Oracle does matter because you kill it in response to the trigger, removing their devotion. So Thassa's Oracle only wins you the game. Yeah. Rest in peace is good versus them. Why? Don't think so. Rest in, rest in peace slows them down. Yeah, abilities check at resolution for devotion. That is correct. Yeah, they just, I mean, it slows them down. It makes them do it in one turn, like already have to have Jason play. No, it, it does slow them down. I don't think I don't think that's good enough though. Like... Ballista for one could also stop Oracle. Well, that's not true. It's a one three, right? Blister for three could stop Oracle. Do 
It's one of those. New deck, not familiar with. <clears throat> the off-the-cuff lines. And Brian Torvald's crib, fair. I don't know. My issues with Riot run deeper than their their workplace culture. Like at the end of the day, you should go play whatever whatever you enjoy. But like, like so like a lot of people took issue with like how Blizzard approached the whole Hong Kong player situation, and rightfully so. And like, if you took issue with how they approach that situation, you should probably take issue with companies that are wholly owned by Tencent. And like Tencent has their hand in almost everything these days, because that's part of part of what China is just doing. But Riot is like entirely owned. It's not just like an invested partner. I mean, companies can make changes and address their issues. I've actually been kind of surprised. I was expecting, I was expecting the Legends of Runeterra to be bigger than it was when it first started. And like, it's only had like 10 to 30,000 people watching it concurrently on Twitch all weekend, which is low for what would be considered a big game. this and see what we get any cool decks with Kiora and the new triple your mana card thanks for the four months Timor I actually rejected the last build around submission for the triple your mana your card the triple your mana card is just not a standard playable card like the things you need to be doing for the triple your mana card to be relevant means you should be winning the game with Nyssa or with Hydroid Crisis anyways. So like by the time you can play a seven drop, you should just be playing cards that win the game, not playing an enabler for the next card that wins you the game. Uh, I just stopped playing Mythgard in my spare time. Just kind of lost my interest, Micromom. Thanks for the first 13 months in Fern Flow. The game, core gameplay, obviously, is very good. I enjoy it mechanically, but the card pool is just kind of shallow. Hey, we did the thing, right? They don't, they don't have a Doom Blade, that's the thing. Okay, and actually, I should just pass here, right? All right, they're conceding, good. Has Mythgard gone the way of Hex? No, they're still, they still exist, they're still functional. They're pushing out a new client update this month. I believe, I believe Mythgard's client update, if it didn't already happen, is supposed to include their in-client tournament mode. They're just a new smaller game. It doesn't have, doesn't have, like, and that's the thing about things like Legends of Runeterra too, right? Like, newer games just don't have the card pool magic has, and it takes them a little while to build it up. So, like, a big part of what gives magic the level of replayability it does for people like me who play constantly is the ability to have, you know, lots of different combinations of things. And just, like, you know, their first set is big at 400 cards, but like a 400 card set is still smaller than Magic Standard format. And then, and then there's the business half of it too is like, this is my job, right? So like my numbers when I stream any non-Magic game are worse than when I'm streaming a Magic game. So like if I'm streaming a non-Magic game, it's basically like I'm skipping work. So like any time I have dedicated to Mythgard has to be extra fun time and like my personal life hasn't really allowed me extra fun time to like do extra streams past magic stuff.
Yay, discard spells. Punch you in the face before you punch me in the face. Set the, set the goose loose, let me know how we feel. Their worst thought sees. I mean, thought erasure doesn't cost them life and it surveils. Kind of hard to call that worst thought sees. I'm going to shock this in because my life total just really doesn't matter here. So that's why I can hold up Murderous Rider if I need to. We got you, homemade meat. Good morning. Good, good luck, Godspeed, hero. Okay. Well, you know. This means, uh... Walking Ballista is a live top deck. So, time to start with the beatdown. No, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a food at end of turn. And if I draw a blank, I'm going to shock in this land. Trail of crumbs. Trail of crumbs changes the dynamic. Okay. So, if this had been a blank, I was going to shock in the land, crack both food, put two counters on here, give this lifelink, attack them for four. So we could lose the game next turn. <clears throat> they delve their, the entirety of their bin, so if they have Inverter plus Thassa's Oracle, we lose. And like, they just cast Dig Through Time, so like there's a pretty good chance they have those two cards. Yep. So this flips their deck over, and then Thassa's Oracle kills us here. Yep. So this trigger says, if your deck count is less than or equal to your devotion to blue, you win the game. Man, why can't we have Sahili combo in this format? I really think banning Sahili was a mistake. That was that was not a ban I was super happy with. Feel like I feel like the only things that were like marginally close to that okay about that deck involved little Tefri. Yeah. 
So, kind of feeling like the last time we played the food deck without the combo kill in it, and that, like, the, the, the food package just has so much air that doesn't interact with my opponent. A lot of times they just get to do their thing and we lose to them doing their thing. One of the games in that last set, we were able to kind of combo them, but like with Trail of Crumbs being our only form of card selection, I feel like trying to trying to lean on comboing consistently isn't really going to happen here. I mean, we played a Mana Dork too. And like I have this Abrupt Decay. <laughs> That's unfortunate. They have exactly enough for Formidable here. This card, this card is really good. I think, I think the deck the opponent's playing is arguably the best deck in this format at the moment. Yeah, I mean, honestly, there's probably... There's probably a build of... There's probably a build of Heliod combo that's just like... Blue white control or just guy control with Heliod combo, so you get to play dig as well. So hopefully their play is just a love struck beast here and not like a Galta, so I can abrupt decay it. Okay, that qualifies. So they can only haste one of these, thankfully. Thanks for that. Thanks for the five months, Mr. Rainbow. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Hope you're having a good one wherever you're at. So I get to decay Registor here at least. Yeah, I wish... I actually would have liked to try that deck in Modern on Magic Online, but it's just, it's so unplayable on Moto. It's not a, not a good scene. Heliod Biomancer combo is too fragile for Pioneer. Yeah, too many moving pieces, too slow. There's also no reason to play it in Pioneer Green Sky because you can just combo with Ballista. That's like just worse than something you could be doing already. All right, so I'm gonna pass here, <laughs> and then we're gonna be on jump blocking duty this turn. They drew a bomb. Ah, kinda, kinda a bomb. Just a friendly reminder that, hey, streamer, are you sick, even if you mean it well, is like, it's a shitty thing to say. Because, like, one, if they're not sick, you're just saying, hey, streamer, you sound bad and making them feel bad. And two, if they are sick, if they are sick, you're just needling them about being sick. It's like, it's like asking... Some, it's like asking a woman if she's pregnant. It's like an all, but it's like, it's likely an all downside question. Cause like, if she's not pregnant, you're about to be in a lot of trouble. Well, I've got a lot of chump blockers. There's a land that doesn't kill me at least. We're going to four here. Let's 
So, what's the plan? I think I just don't have any outs because my lands hurt me here. I guess I guess I can go I guess I can Vraska kill this play Goose Chump Block. I mean that's just how that's just how Twitch works, Justin. So usually usually how the streams work is when we do Moto to start, we like slowly climb to somewhere between like seven hundred and a thousand people with Moto. And then like when we switch over to Arena, we'll climb up to somewhere between like twelve to fifteen hundred. That's that's actually part of the reason why I why I do Pioneer or Magic Online to start my streams is because like even if I start with Arena, um, it still takes a little bit to build build the viewer count up. So might is might as well do the lower viewer count thing to start. All right, so what are we doing here? So I need to I need to eat this to not be dead. I drew another goose. So I guess I goose. I'm gonna eat this and draw some cards, see what we get. Looking for a cat, huh? So like, we have the combo now, but like, I just don't have time to actually implement, execute the combo, right? Like they're gonna run me down before it happens. Do you think Pioneer is low viewer count because of Pioneer? Or because of Moto? Definitely Magic Online. 100,000% because it's on Magic Online. That's lethal, right? They give it haste. Clockwork John, thanks for the three months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. The Pioneer numbers tend to be better than my modern numbers ever were. When we were doing lots of modern. All right. So Beetle pushes, Abrupt Decays. I think Frasca's too slow here. Well, I mean, I was dead that turn, so I don't, I don't know. Is Massacre Girl bad here? She might be okay. What am I? What am I cutting though? Like again, like this package is just like so many cards. So like, sideboarding here feels really rough because I kind of feel like I've got like twenty four cards I can't cut. It's like, okay, these are all removal spells, I guess. So, like, am I trimming some of these removal spells? It's been a long time since I played Pokemon TCGO. If you, if you dig back in my archives, you'll find some videos of me playing it from many years ago. Their digital client's really good. Their online presence sucks, though. Like, for as big as the Pokemon IP is as a whole, the Pokemon TCG... Like, if you look at their average, like, I can even look it up. Pokemon trading card game. They currently have 352 concurrent viewers. I feel like I'd rather trim Heliod rather than trim Trail. Just because, like, Heliod is... Heliod is a card that doesn't do anything if I'm not comboing, and this can help me find it. My friend Ben helped convince me. Maybe... I don't really have cards or an account. So I probably would need that provided, too. The Rainbow, the Rainbow Road deck was fun. I think I keep this... 
I actually I actually owned the Rainbow Road deck in paper for a bit. I was I was kind of sad their organized their organized play set up ended up being Rancid because I mechanically I enjoyed Pokemon as a card game. It's just between there not being any Twitch presence for it and then their paper organized play being a dumpster fire, it just like snuffed out any interest that I had. They banned they banned the donk deck. So that deck that deck's not legal from my understanding anymore. But yeah, that deck was sweet. When I when I was streaming it, one of my old friends had let was lending me their account. I haven't talked to them in a while. I wonder if their login's still the same or if they play anymore. Uh, Cauldron Familiar is great here, right? Unless we just start bouncing back and forth with this oven. That's super unfortunate. Okay, Goose is actually a great draw. Because it means that I can Murderous Rider this Goose next turn. It's my second Black Source. I never played Paper Yu-Gi-Oh. <clears throat> never, never got into that one. Wonder if there's an Amsterdam Delirium Shell with Traverse for Heliod combo. Sounds like you haven't spent enough time on my website. Because if you head on over to jeffhoagland.com, you will you will find an Abzan Abzan Ballista combo deck in the Delirium Shell. It's pretty good. That was that was Pokemon, Justin. Although I'm told I'm told Paper Yu-Gi-Oh is littered with cheaters too, but I don't have any first-hand experience there. Perfect. Yeah, I'm told I'm told Yu-Gi-Oh has a lot of combo decks in it, but again, I don't I don't have any first-hand experience there. Did anybody, um, there was a brief moment of a Harry Potter trading card game. I remember having, having those as a child. I feel like, I feel like I came across those in a move at some point. I, I don't remember anything about it. I just remember that it existed. Second trail of crumbs. I think I'd rather have the land that doesn't hurt me. <laughs> so like this is another problem with trying to depend on cat oven in this in the in this format is like green stompy's a real thing. And the green stompy deck plays a bunch of steel leaf champions. Oh, I should have brought this back with Temple Garden, right? I guess I can just fetch a Fetch a swamp here. So like this, this I just can't block. Haven't watched a lot of Pioneer recently. Have you found? A ballistic combo deck that's felt reasonable. Yeah, the one we talked about, the one that someone else just talked about, the delirium list that's up on my website, I think is fine. Are they gonna attack me with this? That seems like a mistake. 
Yeah, I think, I think attacking me and giving me a free block with this cat here is a pretty big punt on their part. I, I really just don't think Pokemon TCG has good parallels to Magic. The core, the core gameplay is just so fundamentally different that I think, I think you do yourself a disservice by trying to compare Pokemon TCG to Magic decks. They do, and Pokemon foils don't curl like magic foils. So when people tell you you can't have foils without warping, I'm just like, Pokemon does it pretty well. We might, might be able to race them here, huh? Yeah. Yeah, their their digital client is kind of a mess though. While it's nice that you get a free digital booster with paper. Well, it's nice that you get a free digital booster with paper with paper booster packs. Acquiring cards on Pokemon TCGO is probably the most single convoluted messed up process of any digital client I've ever played. It's real, real, real weird. Yeah, they they enforce not uh not not selling for money. Yeah, they they have a, their terms of service actually isn't that different from Magic Online. They just actually enforce it. I mean, to be fair, I'm not sure why you're suggesting running Sweepers instead of Massacre Girl, because Massacre Girl's a card I can find with this and would be fine here, right? Like, Massacre Girl would sweep this board, and now, now we're just dead. <clears throat> hey, uh, I think I'm going to be done with this one. This, uh... I don't, I don't think these oven decks are competitive in this format. I think, like I said in the start, that Heliod Ballista was an interesting thing to try in this deck. But I feel like this is just, this is just too many cards that don't impact the board. And this format's like, it's not as brutal as modern, but it's like, it's like pretty brutal. So like... And yeah, Sans, Sans Walking Ballista, this deck's basically a standard deck. So, like, it's just, you have too many cards that, like, you're spending mana not impacting the board or advancing it in a meaningful way, and, like, Oven plus Cauldron Familiar just doesn't do enough against a lot of the decks that are trying to run you down in this format. So, like, even the traditional aggro decks, like the green aggro deck we just played against, they have too many tramplers or steel leaf champions just like go around cat oven where normally that's like a meaningful thing in standard for keeping you alive so yeah i don't i don't think i'm gonna take any more trail of crumb sex in this format i think i think this was worth trying and i'm glad we took a crack at it but i don't i don't feel like i feel like we didn't have enough selection to find these consistently and like you really can't fit more selection in here without like gutting this package and at that point you're just a different deck Hey, Closet Pan, thanks for the third of a year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. All right, what are we doing? We're going to roll on into a couple different standard decks at a minimum. We're going to kick it off with some Sultai Control on Magic Arena. I'll be back in just a few minutes. I'm going to quick ad roll while we get set up for that. Thanks for hanging out today, folks. Happy Sunday.